What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach Stenstrom and welcome to the channel. So today is the day that we are finally getting started on the air ride, the airlift performance kit for the 300 or well, for the whole LX platform. I didn't go through and record doing any of the disassembly of my uh, suspension. So as you guys can see, I did a lot of extra work. That's why I didn't record doing any of that because a lot of this stuff don't need to come out. But while I was in there, I went ahead and replaced my lower control arms, upper control arms, sway bar end links, all on the front with Moog. I just use them whenever I replace anything. So I figured I'm in here, I'm doing stuff. I'm rebuilding the front end. It already has Moog um, hub assemblies and outer tie rods. So we're good to go and my calipers are off, which I showed you because we're going to be painting those. So again, a lot of extra work that you guys didn't need to see. I also went above and beyond and did a lot of painting. So before I get to this unboxing, if y'all just want to skip to the part where I start installing, I'll put the time right here. Y'all can do that. If not, we still got to unbox the front rear kit. I'll show you guys the setup before we get started. Um, I'm going to show you guys this now because you're going to see it in the video anyway. My wheel wells were white, but just dirty and stained. And they looked like garbage and I didn't like it. So I went ahead, cleaned them, scuffed them, masked everything up, and went ahead and painted them a satin black. So as you can see, I didn't do the whole wheel well. mainly because the wheel well cover covers all the other stuff so i just want it to clean up the area that is seen that's kind of half-ass but it is what it is i did it for a reason because it's just a lot of work cleaning all that and there's a lot of wiring and stuff in there that i didn't feel like messing with but i also did not record this but i went ahead and painted the engine bay as well Again, the white engine bay was its kind of stained. It was yellowing. It was just an eyesore to me. So a lot of cleaning and masking and taking stuff apart and taking this down as much as possible to clean it up and get it ready for paint. Again, a lot of work. Didn't record it. So let's just go ahead and get to the airlift. So we got the airlift performance. This will be the rear setup. How you doing? Hi. He's no help. <laughs> yeah. So we're just gonna set some stuff over here. I'll tell you what these. So these are the leader hoses that'll go on the bags. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go and set those over. All the mounting hardware. Craig's got the rear shocks. We'll unbag those in a minute. Get those together. Got one bag. We got the brackets, the mounting brackets, top and bottom. Damping things for the shocks, mounts, we'll leave all that in there. Um, let's go ahead and get these struts up. Oh, yeah, you're gonna do that. I'm gonna do that one hand. <laughs> was heavier than I thought. Again, leader hoses. And I've got all the mounting hardware over there. We got the front rear set up. 
which I'll go ahead and we're gonna start installing those because it's not that difficult. Um, I guess I can give you guys a quick view. I'm doing a temporary air management setup um, as far as the tank and compressor goes, uh, but all the airlift brain and wiring will be the same. Right now I'm gonna be running the smaller tank and a single compressor. Uh, here's all the airlift. I did go with a three piece setup. I didn't want to do the H. I'm not real big on the height sensors, even though they do make more sense. Uh, if you have a lot of people riding with you on and off, it'll adjust the height. Three P is more of, it's a pressure sensitive system. So if you have it set at a certain PSI and then you have someone get in, it's going to mess with the ride height. So it's something you'll have to get used to. Height basically levels it however you want it. Um, but yes, I'm doing that because I'm only going to be doing just a basic, basic setup down here for right now until I decide to build something how I really want to. But first I got to get my rear strut tower brace and things like that. Um, so let's get all this organized un unpackaged and then we'll start assembling things and showing you guys basically I'm going to catch you up as we go because I have never installed one of these systems. I'm not a professional, so disclaimer. Uh, if I do something wrong in the video, I'm not a certified mechanic. I'm not a shop. You can see this is in the garage where we do everything. I'm just a do-it-yourself kind of guy. So we're going to do this ourselves. It's a pretty straightforward kit. Uh, I'm going to run the wires and airlines how I want to, how I see fit. If you like it or if you think you can do it better, then please do that on your car. I am just doing this how I think it might, should maybe be done right now. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and award, we're, we're, we are. Yes. I got it figured out. I ain't editing this, I don't even care. We're gonna start buttoning up the suspension and get the bags mounted and all that. This should go really fast since all the suspension's already torn out. And we'll see how far we get today before we start on the management side. So reading the instructions, the first thing I read is that these tabs need to be cut off. I still don't have a compressor at the house, so that leads to a problem because I have a whole drawer of pneumatic tools one of them being a cutting wheel, which would be perfect for this. So, as you can see, boop, boop. <laughs> so we're calling a buddy to see if we can borrow a little portable compressor at the moment. So heads up, if you are doing this yourself, it does state to cut these off because the bag can rub on it and will cause failure and will void the warranty. So, don't void the warranty. So that's first thing first for the front. I'm now gonna dive into the rear setup because as you can see, we have a bunch of different bracket setups here. And I need to figure out how we are going to do or how, oh, well, there's a picture that helps. We're going to go ahead and uh, dive into this and see what else we might need to get started. I should have read the instructions before. <sighs> is what it is. I may have underestimated this kit. Well, actually, it's just the rear. The rear is very, very intricate. And if I can give you guys any advice, it is to follow the instructions because I, we're going to say I tried to wing it to an extent. I didn't really try to wing it. I looked at it and I assumed what process each piece needed to go on. Now I was wrong. So this thing sucks because this has to be lined up like perfect. We put this plate on, but we forgot to put this on first. As you can see. tighten these this is on there you can't get this in there um, 
This we put a little extra Teflon tape on both fittings just as precautionary. That goes there. You have a left side and a right side. And this will go and sit open on it like that. Now I'll show you guys how everything looks on. So this is handy. This is a handy light right here. Okay. So you're gonna have one bolt that goes in here and the nut that goes on this, you'll have to get up under, it goes in here and then up there. Kind of a pain. And then on this other bracket where I just showed you where that countersink one is, it goes up, where is it at? I can't see the camera. There it is. It goes up in this area which is the bottom of this control arm. Oh, kind of a pain. But no worse than getting in and getting these tightened down because this bolt right here, right in, oh, this is terrible. This bolt right there, the top one. So what it is, is it's this piece right here goes up into the spring perch. Actually, I'll just show you. So you have the spring perch here, and this goes nut side up. And as you can see, slide in. And that right there is what that mount goes into. Very interesting design, but it works. Um, now this was trial and error. The other side should go a lot smoothly because I know exactly what process. I'm not gonna try to skip anything. I'm not gonna have stuff pre-assembled trying to put it in because that just didn't work for me. Now, the shocks are pretty self-explanatory. This is gonna go in there. And then that bolts on up there. So we'll get that done here in a second. Um, Craig ran over to a buddy's house and we now have a little compressor. This compressor is all we need to just give some air, some PSI to my cutting wheel. Then I can cut those brackets off and we can do the front assembly. Now, I don't even know what time it is. That took me way longer than I thought it was going to. But like I said, the other side should go a lot more smoothly. I need to get a picture. I forgot. I need a picture for Instagram. So let me do that. So the rear is now done. Well, rear, driver's side. But now we have the compressor. Now I'm going to get in here and... I have to cut this tab off and this tab off. And as you can see, I mean, I wish I would have known because these were out when we replaced the upper control arm. And here's a new lower control arm. Here's a new sway bar end link. This is the old, new <laughs> move tie rod. Now, Craig, I guess do you wanna, you can record me while I do this. Oh, handy dandy. Uh... And of course, you can see I have my eye protection on. So, for all you OSHA approved garage peoples, here you go, Craig. So, I don't know if you're how much you're going to be able to even see. But... Oh, great. All right. So, I'll start with this tab. Of course, it's going to be cutting towards me. Close. 
very hot. There's one done. Now we'll get this one done. Hope you guys enjoy watching me throw sparks all over my face because we aren't recording it anymore. <laughs> we got the brackets cut. And as you can see, that light's a little harsh. And then we got this side done over here. And I went ahead and Got my little three inch grinder, angle grinder. And went ahead and tried to round it off a little bit so that there's no real sharp edges. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw a little bit of spray paint on those bolts, especially since it's just bare metal now. And I'm gonna let it dry overnight because I'm hungry, all this, Took a little bit longer than I had wanted to anyway. The front's real simple for the most part as far as assembly goes. It's basically the air strut with, you know, new bolts and then the leader hose. So we got one bolt on here and then we got the three bolts that go right here or nuts rather and that's done so that won't take no time i'll touch base with you tomorrow and we'll get all four corners done this one video will just be the four install four corners installed really and then i'll do a separate video for the air management so i'm gonna call it a day and i'll see you guys tomorrow it's the next day we're gonna finish tackling this front end that i cut yesterday which I don't need to remind y'all because y'all just saw it. I was about to tell you what was going on. Anywho, so I made my Instagram post. I also cut or posted in one of the Facebook groups I'm in. And I've been told by a couple people that I should probably massage, AKA hammer, this little area right in here. So, it ain't gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna go ahead and massage it a little bit because I already took a cutting wheel to my car. What's a, what's a little extra massaging gonna do? So we're gonna do that real quick. And I mean, I'm only gonna move it over about an eighth of an inch or so. And what we're going to do with the car once all this air ride is on is I'm gonna do a lot of testing and seeing how everything clears when it's completely laid out. I should be able to see through the wheels since they're pretty open and they're 22s. I should be able to see up there in that little spring pocket area in the front. Uh, another friend told me to double check the torque on the rears after about a week and make sure that everything's still tight. So there will be a lot of um, making sure everything's good after we do this, but I need to hammer real quick. We'll get that front strut in. We'll get the front strut in, which is pretty simple. It's lower bolt and three bolts on top. I'll show you that. And then we're going to knock out the other side because the other side should go a lot quicker. Now that I understand the rear setup better. And I'll try to give you a better video or something of how to do the rear because the rear is kind of a pain. But at least I know the process now. Uh, this isn't a super hands-on tutorial of how to do this, but it should give you a good overview of how to do the air ride if you want to. Now I'm done talking. I'm going to hammer a little bit, show you what I hammer, and then we'll get this in there. So we got the top just hand tight. As you can see, where I hammered right in there and I hammered right there, you can see it's bowing in a little bit. Same with this. Uh, it should relieve a little 
or give it a little room. Um, hopefully it's not really an issue, but I'd rather be safe. Uh, make sure that when this is going in, these should already be one way that this triangle goes this way. So that this mount right here, because this mounts up to your sway bar, your sway bar in link, will go there. Oh, like one of these ways. Now we're going to lift this back up, get this bolt ran through, and we can get this up in the upper control arm, and we'll get everything basically hand tight, and then we'll go through and torque everything accordingly, and just make sure that we have everything as is. But like I said, the front setup's super easy. Three bolts on top, two on bottom, for ours, I think I'm gonna have to use one spacer for older models. The first gens, they are gonna have to use, it looks like there's two provided spacers are required for the early model. So there's four provided, looks like I'll use one. You would use two if you had an earlier model. So very cool that they added that in. Um, we're going to go ahead and get this all buttoned up. I'll show you the end result. Here is the final product for the front. I'll go inside. So that's all in. We got the, like I said, the new sway bar end link, new lower control arm, new upper control arm. Um, beat those in. Cut those off. These are all well, we're looking for washers right now. Um, it doesn't come with washers for the top. These are locking, but I don't like the gaps. Uh, maybe I can get in there and twist this and center it a little bit, which I probably will, but I still will feel better if I just put washers on there. Um, that's just the OCD part of me. Now, Again, this rear is done. We showed you the, the shocks in. Everything, again, is hand tight. This bag setup is done. That's all torqued down. Now we're going to move on to the passenger side. And I'm going to run through it, guys, because I'm ready to get this done. Okay, when I was showing you guys the bag setup yesterday, I showed you that this countersink threaded bolt, I guess, needed to go in before this bag mount was in. And then you can see there's one there, and then there's a slot there. That's going to go, the black one is going to go there, and then the slotted one is going to go here. Um, so I'll show you guys that real quick. Now... Y'all just gonna take my word for it because we're well, here. Can you hold the camera? All right. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but probably not. All right. Take my word for it. This goes in this hole back here. Okay. And then, as you can see, this one goes right here. And that's gonna take this bolt, is gonna go straight like that. But this nut has to go in this cradle. And you gotta kind of fish it up in there and hold it. So, Craig, will you try to, can you see that hole? This one. Yes. Okay. So basically you gotta fish it up in there. Can you see it? Then get an angle where you can see it. So, all right, Craig, you're making a mess. I only see my hand. All right. So as you can see, kind of, cause I knocked the light down and I don't have any more hands. There's the nut. And here, Craig, just hold the camera. No, I don't need it in my face anymore. So there's a nut, and then you can get it started in here. And now that's set up. Then you'll use this one, and it's gonna go up in this hole. You're gonna get it up, up right in there and tighten it on that bottom one. Kind of a pain, but it works.
All right, now that these are hand tight, front and back, this needs to go on, cradled down. And this is where the it gets a little fun because now this thing right here has to go on and it's going to take some maneuvering to get it to seat in this cradle. So I'm doing this with one hand, guys. So bear with me. Okay. So now you can see that it's in this cradle and we got to get this bolt up in that little washer nut thing that we put in there yesterday so we got to get little in there and just kind of hand tighten that in i cannot do that with one hand and craig probably won't get a good angle but once that's in we'll get it angled and you can see there's a hole here and there's a hole on this side that then you got to get to line up with these super fun time consuming aggravating but that's the process so after this side being an absolute nightmare, we basically have it done. I have one issue that I am addressing now that I don't like. I'm going to have to figure out. This cradle is hitting on this control arm right there. Now... I'm going to see if I can bend that cradle a little bit and make it work. I'll let you know what I do. As you can see, we gave it some clearance thanks to this pry bar. This is going to be one of those spots like in the front where I'm going to keep an eye on it after driving it a while. I'll double check it and make sure that it hasn't moved or it's not rubbing on anything. Same thing like I did with the front where I beat it in with a hammer. I'll make sure that those bags aren't touching. Uh, Craig went ahead and knocked out the front while I was getting my ass kicked in the rear. Looks nice. Again, calipers are in a box over there behind Craig because they're getting painted. So after all this is finally assembled, I can focus on getting those cleaned up and scuffed and ready for paint. There's all my stock junk. Well, except for the rotors. My rotors are junk too. I was gonna buy new rotors, but I ain't got no money. Um, we found washers. Craig found washers that cleans up that area a lot, in my opinion. Uh, the only thing left to do on all four corners, really, is put in the uh, dampeners, which I'll show you. Here's one. These are pretty neat. It's they're threaded on the inside. Focus. And there's a thread right there. So what you do is put it in there, and you thread that silver bottom in. Now it's tight. Now you have your dampening. S is for soft. H is for hard. Pretty simple. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is supposed to be 30 way dampening. So you can basically click it all one way so that you can get to the end and then you can either count backwards or count up depending on if you went too soft, too hard, whatever. Um, I'm just going to play with it and figure it out after driving the car for a while. So we'll get those in. Um, and now we're just going to snug everything up, get everything to torque spec, which I will have to look up and I'm just going to knock all that out. I trust you do you guys to do your due diligence and figure that out because I'm sure all these have different torque specs. We're going to get that done and that's the end of today's install. I'm pretty sure I touched base on everything involved with the four corners. If I missed something, I'm sorry. If you have questions, send them down below. 
Now, that's it for today. Tomorrow we're gonna be working on the air management. We're gonna get the tank, the compressor, and all the wiring done. I know I need two compressors. I get it. I just don't have one right now, and this is a temporary setup. So, I know. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications because we got more air ride install coming soon. We also have my wheels. I don't know if you guys seen. We have new tires. Those are gonna get on after we powder coat these wheels. So there's a lot coming, the calipers are coming. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next video.